Yo! Do you need a TikTok guy with a broccoli cut and earrings? <laughs> Maybe one day, if I get a billion dollars, I'll just open up a bunch of Huang Man Chi chains. Hey, you should have shotgunned it, bro. Being in the OC, to being a dad, to wiping tables, to making films and commercials. As you can see on the sign, no beef pho. We got the tomato bait. Oh, 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 it's a splatter. Expand your kanji palette. You got pandan cream on top of a watermelon bing funnel. Oh, uh, soy sauce dip. The 626 holds a special place in our heart and represents a unique place in America. From Chinese Korean Shao Kao to Hanoi Pho Ga to Gamjitang to Chengdu Bing Fun straight from New York. There are always new spots opening up in the 626. So keep an eye out for trends that might come to your city in a few years. All right, you guys, the very first spot on our brand new summer 626 food crawl is Kyoto Gyokatsu straight from Kyoto, Japan. We're talking about fried beef katsu no. Man, throw that thing on right now. Ah! Look at that thing sizzle. All right, you guys, so we have a sizzling metal plate right here. We've got premium beef that has been like shallow fried very quickly. But man, I'm telling you, it cooks quick. Yeah, I actually burned my finger touching this stone grill before, <laughs> so very, be very careful. This thing is hot. This piece is like even more well done than I need. I've got a wasabi mayo right here. I'm gonna dip it with this like yuzu ponzu right here. Kyoto Gyokatsu. Honestly, no, that is like seriously like whipped cream on top of noodles. Yeah, hey, it's very different. I've got to say like, there's not a lot of these restaurants. Honestly, there are a lot of fun things going on all at one time. Gyoto Kyokatsu is just expanding out of Japan into other parts of Asia like more recently. So it's pretty cool that the first spot they picked in LA was Alhambra. Hey man, we in Kyoto style in Alhambra. And it's pretty cheap too. This was like 44 bucks. Wasabi on beef. Here I got the spicy noodle and I think it's really funny because this one actually kind of tastes like a boudé jjigae or like an army stew, you know, from the Korean side. So, and there is actually a lot of like what seems to be spicy kimchi in here. Mmm. Six through six feels like Asia. This was amazing. I'm sure we could have tried like 40, 50 different things here, but we gotta go on to the next spot. Let's go. All right, our next brand new concept in the 626 is actually coming from the OC, the Vietnamese stronghold. We got pho dao cow. They specialize in pho ga, chicken pho. As you can see on the sign, no beef pho. Yo, Nell, are you excited about this? Man, they're bringing all these chains from the OC up. They might have to bring Cafe Lou up here or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go get some fuga. All right, guys, here we have the fuga. Um, you know, fuga, this style is actually more from the north, but the owners of this spot are from the south, so they got their own style on it. Here we have the wide noodles, very soft. You have the chicken on the side. Here I have my fuga dip. And then here you got the dry pho and the soy sauce dip, which I've never had before, so I'm looking forward to trying that. You poured it on, let's go in, man. All right, I'm gonna dip this chicken in. Uh-huh. Mmm. Ooh, that broth is so good, it's super clean. Although I've had dry chicken pho, not quite like this with how many uh, onions are on top. You got white and green onions, and you got the pho at the bottom. I chicken pho from the Dao Cao region. Oh, soy sauce dip. Mm. The grilled chicken is really good. And one of the beautiful things about the 626 is that, you know, as much as it pulls from the people who move here that want to start businesses, they're actually pulling a lot of chains from outside, whether that's OC or Asia or Japan or Taiwan, wherever it is, man. That's why the 626 might have some of the best food in the nation. I'm just excited, man. I just like 626 being just so, so pan-Asian, man. Ah, plenty of peppers in that. Mm. We're a ramen concept from Tokyo, Japan. Specialized in a tokotsu pork broth. We cook in house for about 24 hours. The original King's our number one seller here. The spicy one, this is actually my personal favorite. It's like a mild spicy, nothing for your mouth. Right, finally we got our food here at Ramen Nagi and I'm excited I have the Red King. Look at this, man, it's beautifully crafted back there. I got the thin noodles. Nelson, what do you got? I got the Green King, which is a basil pesto base. So this is kind of a fusion ramen. It's supposed to be a little bit Italian influenced. And uh, you know, there's a lot of Japanese and Italian uh, fusion all the time. So I'm very interested got, about this one. bacon pieces, you got pork slices. Red King, this is Jimmy's personal favorite. Ooh, brought this delicious, super porky and very spicy. Mmm. 
for $14.50 a high quality bowl of ramen. This is a steal. And you know what I love about this spot? Is that they really do not take shortcuts. Everything here takes time. The broth takes 24 hours. This egg is marinated for 12 hours. Look at that. Beautiful. It's like a basil pesto ramen. I've never had this before. This is incredible. I recommend all ramen heads try this one. This is unlike any ramen you've had before. All right, going in on the karage, which is their personal mayo sauce. Oh, dark Homemade. meat. Homemade. That's actually an egg sandwich mayo sauce. How is it with the egg mayo? It's good with the balance of how, with the honey glaze on the top. Probably one of the best chicken karage's arranged. Especially with the dark meat. Oh, man. All right, you guys, this is the original. Um, I love it when chains come over from Japan because I really feel like it's just the next evolution. I think the 626 is going to be a great training ground to see if these brands from Tokyo, from Fukuoka, from Kyoto can make it in the U.S. The Japanese brands are executing their North American locations. Like with this tier, they got a good chance. You got to go with the thick noodle, T-H-I-C-C, -C, and you got to go with firm, thick and firm. All right, here we go, guys. This is a chashu bowl. You guys, over the years, I've had a lot of different ramen shops in the 626. I think Ramen Nagi is absolutely the number one so far. Now, you think this is the best ramen spot in the 626? 100% the best ramen spot that I've had in the 626. All right, you guys, we're here with the house manager. We're here at Yuan's. This is Chongqing Hot Pot. Tell us about this brand because it's from China, right? Yeah, it's all the China, it's all the Chongqing, the city. I said no more as a Chongqing hot pot, it's more as a more as oil and more nami. All right, you guys, this is a chain from Chongqing, which is pretty cool, which it sort of explains they got this like buffet appetizers right here. All right, you guys, this is an incredibly authentic Chongqing experience. I got the lamb, of course. I got to go into the spicy broth. That's what Chong Chongqing is known for. Now, what are you about to put the shrimp balls in? Pass it out like I do on the court everywhere, you know. You got the tomato bait. Oh, 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 it's a splatter. This is a very classy, high-end crowd in here. They've got the Chinese jazz playing. Like we said, flavors straight from Chongqing. I'm gonna go straight into the yo dear. This is Yang Rou Pian, a lamb's shoulder slice. All right, I'm going in on the lamb, my own sauce. You can definitely tell the quality is higher. You guys saw Da Long Yi, you saw Heidi Lau come in. Now it's for the deep cut chains from China, Chongqing to come over. And let me tell you this, their quality is on another level. The garlic, the spices, everything, incredible. Guys, be warned, authentic Chongqing hot pot is not playing around. It is a different type of spice than the Sichuan one, but to the uninitiated, it's just really hot either way. If you eat Heidi Lau, you gotta try this place, all right? All right, you guys, we are at Tea Char. They got a lot of cool stuff here that's very, very unique. Like we said, again, this is a Yen Bien style of Xinjiang barbecue that has been fused with Korean culture over the past 40 years. Char. It's pretty good, man. I'm gonna dip it into it. So usually when the skewers are, you know, done cooking, you take them off the grill and lay it right on top so they don't get burnt. What are the Korean aspects that are influenced from the Yen Bien, Korean autonomous region? We've got the steamed egg, we've got the kimchi. I think it's such a dope pairing because it gives people what they want from Korean barbecue spots, but it gives the fun twar experience from the Chinese side. Here we got the chow xian lang mian, or in Korean, it's known as nem yang. Of course, it's the cold noodles. For a long time, people did not know places like Yen Bien even existed or in places of like Dongbei, Korean culture is really popping right now, and I think that this is a blending uh, of two cultures that you're gonna see a lot more often. Let's try this. Lung min and skewers, perfect pairing. Late night Korean spot without some corn cheese. All right, you guys, I would definitely say check out tea kebab, check out these yem bien. Korean Chinese, Chinese Korean spots. And what I really like about the Chinese Korean stuff that you have all, you're eating all this burnt, fried, spicy thing, uh, and then you have the Korean cold noodles. Really good way to cool it, cool everything down. Yeah. Hey guys, who knows what we'll see in the future? Yo! Yeah. 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 From East 
East Village, New York, to the 626. Now the two places we be at. Ah! Hey. Hey. You guys have just opened your new shop here. Like, what made you go open in the 626? Oh, good oh. question. Because of weather, we love the weather. It's all sunshine. Every day is warm. All right, here we got the Musang King Durian. Gel and chill, man. Shout out to our friends uh, from New York City that started one out at uh, 626, man. I'm so excited for them. Fresh durian, let's go. The 626 appreciates high quality durian. And I'm really liking this, man. I really think you could go eat at all these different Sichuan spots. There's Mian, there's another spot. Across the street, there's Malu, Bien Bien. You can come here for dessert. Share one of these. All right, man, here we have a ridiculous creation. You got pandan cream on top of a watermelon bing fun. I'm so excited because I just think bing fun has so much potential in being more and more popular. It's healthy, refreshing, cools you down. It fights yeet hay. It could cure heartbreak, I don't know. Check out Gel and Chill in St. Gabriel. All right, you guys, we're here at Gamja Top. They specialize in Gamja Tang, which is a Korean pork neck stew. This is really what gives it the really unique flavor is the perilla, right? I think when people think about Korean food, they're always thinking about, you know, kimchi, gochujang, sesame oil, but do not sleep on the use of perilla leaves. Gamjatang with perilla leaves. It's the best gamjatang in West 626. Whoa! Perilla leaf noodles, here we go. Sticky. This is very interesting. You guys know how I do. I'm the mixologist, so I'm gonna take some of this perilla leaf noodle. I'm gonna set it up real nice there. Take some of the pork neck right there. There we go. Mmm. Very unique flavor. Gamja chop. I give it a four out of five. If you are looking for Korean food in the 626, in the middle of the Chinese zone, definitely check the spot out. Yes, this is gonna be the RBQ sausage, cheese, egg rolls, potato. Fried green beans, I have the shiso basil with pork belly, the pork belly here, pork belly with asparagus, the okra, the shishito pepper. Here I have the goma spinach, it's gonna be the chicken skin, the kobe beef with garlic sauce, kobe beef with pongu sauce, the shrimp, shiitake mushroom, scallop, the chicken thigh with the yakitori sauce. There's gonna be the enoki mushroom with pork belly, the cherry tomato with pork belly, and the chicken thigh with salt. It's gonna be the yuzu pepper. It's really popular for the skewers. It's citrusy, and this is the sudare. It's like a vinegar uh, sauce. Blend. So we put this on top yeah, of that. We'll mix it together and then dip it into the skewers. Okay. Uh, so far, my favorite yakitori skewer here at Shinsengumi was this chicken thigh with spring onion. I think it's really cool that this tier of yakitori was not really available prior. It was only like a little Tokyo thing, maybe Torrance, but now the 626, they have a like a, a good tier skewer spot. Yeah, absolutely. This is a good spot for you to come with your friends, go on a date, just hang out. My personal favorite has got to be the Kobe beef. This was delicious. A little mayonnaise on top, right down the middle. Let's go. All right, guys, here's the goma spinach. It's spinach and some black sesame seed sauce. Never had this dish before in my life. On a place like Main Street, where you have like Gen BBQ, you have Big Cash, you have all these different Asian and non-Asian and very Asian American concepts. You also have Shinsengumi. It's a really cool place. And uh, honestly, the build out's interesting looking too, so it's just a vibe. Listen, they got photos of sumos when you enter the building, okay? Looks like just a regular roasted potato, but let me tell you this, it's done yakitori style, so you know it ain't regular. Ooh, buttery. One of the best roasted potatoes I ever had in my life, actually. All right, everybody, we're here at Magic Milk, and this is like a brand new boba shop here on Main Street. They're talking about oat milk. There is no dairy in this entire place between their cookies and their boba. I got the jasmine oat milk tea with boba. Here I have the strawberry milk matcha with fresh strawberries on top. 
Hey, cheers, cheers to all the lactose people. I think what's cool about this spot, one, I do like the flavor of oat milk because in a lot of the drinks, when I get a chance to, I always order oat milk. But also I think this spot is just so Asian American between the whole aesthetics. It's, I don't know, I could just see it appealing to a lot of different people. There's nothing really traditional about this one. Well, cookies are good. Yeah. And with their drinks, I think they're pretty good. It's not too sweet, kind of tastes healthy. You know, with oat milk, maybe. I like it. All right, our next spot is a well-known spot called After's Ice Cream. I mean, they really led the way as far as like that SoCal Orange County Asian American culture, inspired a lot of small businesses, and they got a new item called the Ube Brownie. Let's check it out. Guys, this is the Ube Brownie. There are bits of brownies chopped up in there. Yo, I'll tell very, you this. very good Ube flavor. Fairly sweet to my liking, but overall it's pretty good. Yo. I think ube is one of the best Asian dessert flavors of the past like 20 years. And obviously after's ice cream, man, it really embodies that SoCal dance crew Asian American vibe where, you know, I think a lot of Asians, they want to work here or come here uh, not to feel traditional, right? All right, you guys, we live in New York City right now, the home of all this Americana pizza culture. However, there are LA skateboard pizzas now that they make in funky flavors. Have you ever had these before? I have not actually. Surprisingly, living in LA, this is new to me. Let's check it out. And you got a perm and you haven't had skateboard pizza? All right, you guys, there is so much LA skateboard memorabilia around right now. And the owners actually are Filipino. They do have a seasick pizza, but we didn't want to order the whole thing. So skateboard, skateboard pizza. pizza. That is definitely a West Coast pizza stylistically, but not bad at all. Pretty good. Yeah, definitely not bad. I got to come back and definitely try some of the Asian flavors, especially the Filipino one. Alright you guys, you know I have a new item at the Chin Noodle. This is a chain from Xi'an, China. Uh, well, Xi'an, China based. I don't think it actually the chain is from Xi'an. Yeah, that shit wow! That shit That's busting. Is it's like recipes from Xi'an, but they're still working with what the California climate, geography, import, export situation allows for. So, oh, at the bottom there, Bing Fun. Hey, yo, guys, man, the. For $7, the fruit is super fresh and they give you a lot. This is the brand new real mango drink, guys. Let me tell you this, Meat Chin Noodle is very, very underrated. They have delicious Xi'an food and actually some new delicious fruit drinks. Oh my gosh, that's like straight up like fresh mango puree. This is good, this is good. No suburban Asian enclave paradise is complete without 85 degrees, and no 85 degrees is complete without new cultural items like the Aussie meat pie, bread. Of course, you got a Hokkaido custom milk bun. That's no brainer. All right, I got my Aussie meat pie. Let me see how this is. Wow. Oh my goodness, brioche, Hokkaido cream. Um, you know one thing I've noticed, Andrew? 85C over the years definitely adopted more Western flavors. Yeah, and I think it's working because you know what? The bread is so fluffy. Whoa, this was a five oh. out of five. Yo, this was already better than a lot of meat pies I had in Sydney. Andrew, this is a very rare Taiwanese mooncake called a Tung Po, a Tung Po Ro. Andrew, they've got cheese, yolk song. Are you saying it has everything in it? It has everything in it, guys. You cannot believe it got pineapples, egg yolks. Okay, here I have a yue bing that's in the circular shape and it has a pineapple yolk. Oh, oh it's a pineapple It's actually cake. a mix between uh, Taiwanese feng li su and a canto style. Wow. Everything in it, I would recommend it. Try it, but it's a, it's a little overwhelming. I like the pineapple mooncake a lot. I'm feeling this one. Andrew, this is a mochi egg tart. Um, you know, the egg tart has got to go through more iterations, right? Look, half Dante. Hey, making everything mochi is really, really popular nowadays. Very, very trendy. I, I like the texture, but I might have to roll with the original egg tart. All right, you guys, we're at Jin Tea House. They have their new invention here. Nell, have you ever seen Kai Danzai in this? On a stick? Type of form? No. Almost like a Yudan. It looks pretty good. Just to show you guys, it's got red bean on the inside, and I think these this actually have my... boba on the inside. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I ate one with no boba, but really? I like it though. You guys, everything is a skewer now. Everything is Shilin 626 night marketized, and same with the Hong Kong egg waffles. Pause that, yo, now. <laughs> yo, you eating the ball filled with balls. Yo! <laughs> All right, you guys, we're at Ika Sizzling Pot, guys. You know, we always come here because they always got new stuff. This is their elevated Americanized version of Huang Man Ji. Huang Man Ji is yellow braised chicken. It is from Jinan, but I'm telling you this, they got quail eggs in it, sausages in it, all types of tofu in it. And of course, we got the uh, Mala Michin. What do you know about this? Hey, 
When I was out in Asia, man, we ate mala michan a lot. They love it over there. Basically, it's a spicy noodle soup. During my stay in Asia, man, I went to a lot of different provinces, you know, tried a bunch of different foods, and I've got to say, a lot of good food in Asia, man. All right, you guys, this is an elevated Huang Manji. Let's see how it fares against the ultra traditional style. Mala michan, here we go. You guys, I'm such a big proponent of Huang Manji. Maybe one day, if I get a billion dollars, I'll just open up a bunch of Huang Man Chi chains or help them expand. Very authentic flavors, man. Got the perfect amount of mala and spice. Not super spicy, perfect on a cold day but, and a hot day. Oh, I got, I got a good question for you. What would you say to other like Southern Chinese from Macau, Hong Kong, where they're not really used to the mainland flavors? What, what would you say to encourage them to try it? Get out of your comfort zone. You know, my dad, you know, he grew up in you know Southern China and now he loves all the Northern China, uh, Chinese foods, man. He loves mala. All right, everybody, they got this pineapple beer drink. It is not alcoholic. I've never had it before. They also have like their kind of Chinese compote. So it kind of tastes like beer because it has some of the hops in it. Hey, you should have shotgunned it, bro. Another huge trend that is making its way over from China to the US, even though it was originally inspired by Western French items anyway, are the deluxe cake spots. No, they are serving slices of cake for like 10, 11, $12. For a slice or the whole cake? A slice. I'm done, bro. Like I said, guys, there's a lot of people from China opening up businesses. They like really fruity, foofy things, but they're putting an Asian twist on it. Mango, grapefruit, and I don't know if uh, the French people that invented the milk crepe would have uh, ever predicted this type of flavor. Ah, that's yours. It's good. The mango layer cake part is good. I did not expect that because there's a tartness and a tanginess yeah, 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 due yeah, to the yeah. grapefruit. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a 4.5 out of five. I'm gonna have to give it a four out of five for sure. And you know I don't like my sweets, but this is good. All right, our next spot that's brand new is Mr. Champion in Arcadia. It's a Hong Kong style spot. And yes, I am always glad to see new HK Canto spots opening up in the 636 because as we know, there are many different sides to Cantonese cuisine and different styles. So upon seeing the food here, we have the Cheng Fun and we have some Juk, but the Cheng Fun is actually more Guangzhou style and actually the owners are from Toy San, so it's a little bit more mainland style. Here we have the Pai Guat Juk right here with preserved vegetables. This is very delicious. And yes, it's a little bit less Hong Kong style, but more, like we said, mainland Cantonese style. Here we got the pig knuckles, AKA the chu sao. Ooh. Um, you know, with some Chinese broccoli. Did you eat this over in, in Macau a lot in Southern China when you were there? I mean, this was a popular dish out there. I personally didn't eat it a lot, but the, it tastes it tastes pretty good. Here we have the ao lam cheng fun. Oh, it's falling apart. That's when you know mm. it's delicate. It's mm. delicate. It's nice. I'm going in on the dry shrimp and egg cheng fun. Yo, Nell, what do you think about this style versus like the Hong Kong style, which is more flat and straight? I like this style more where it, it, it's, it's easier to eat. Maybe. All right, here we have the Pai Guat Chuk, and this is like a Chuk that maybe not all like the young kids would order because uh, it has like the preserved vegetables in it, but let's go in. Uh, reminder, there are a lot of different kanjis out there and you should try them. Don't just go for the Pei Dan Sao Yuk Chuk only. Expand your kanji palette. Pig feet. Mmm. Falls right off the bone. Wow. If you're looking for this dish, this is not a bad choice. Eat it with the juke too. Who knows? No, you ate that clean off the bone. Guys, shout out to Mr. Champion, new Canto spot in Arcadia. Everybody knows that this Panda Ring Japanese donut style is in right now, but you know, there's so many shops putting their own Asian twist on it. You've got ube flavor, you've got Viet coffee, you've got Thai iced tea. Wow. This is the Thai iced tea version of a donut. Viet coffee. Guys, listen, it tastes like Thai tea, but in a Panda Ring donut. Hey, Viet coffee, doesn't taste super strong like Viet coffee, but it tastes good. Of course, we gotta give ube a shot too. These pondering donut spots are so Asian American. I half expect there to be like a dance crew battle, you know, in the corner, some EDM playing. They got some clarity remixes. Check it out. This is Asian America 2022. Our next spot in 626 is a new location at Kim Ki. They are doing chiu chow noodles here. It's a staple. There's Kim Kai, Kim Ki. There's but some other Kims that they might be all related from the same family, but they're serving chiu chow noodles, which is very unique to the 626. Chiu Jiao food is very, very much alive in the 626. Here we have the two most popular dishes, of course, you gotta get at any noodle spot, which is the satay ao yuk mein, and then you have the Chiu Jiao chow mein with the soup on the side. So I have egg noodles and hall fun. 
Oh, hey, snap, bro. We got the bro. double combo. Dude, Chiu Jiao Food lives on in 626. Keep it going. Jiao noodles for $11. There's so much flavor packing in these noodles, man. Man. Dude, the satay, oh my gosh. Trust me, guys. I don't know if you appreciate the Chiu Jiao Food out here, but there's not this many Chiu Jiao restaurants in other Asian spots around America. Man, anytime I'm in a Kim Ki or Kim Kai, a Kim noodle restaurant, man. It makes me just want to say, Gagi Nang. Our next brand new concept in the 626 is basically California, Texas style barbecue, but executed at a very high level, guys. This spot has five out of five stars on Yelp. This is called uh, Craft by Smoke and Fire. We've got the short rib right here. We've got brisket potatoes. No, I mean, um, growing up, there was no Texas barbecue or high tier barbecue in the 626, right? Definitely not at all. So I'm very excited to have, you know, crafts here in the 626 to have some Texas style barbecue. Brisket potato skins. Oh, that's crispy. Real crispy. That puts TGI Fridays to shame. So I believe the ownership here is, you know, part Caucasian, part Latino. So you have got definitely some of the Mexican elements here from the, some of the carne asada or al pastor. This is the beef short rib. I really like the onion. It gives a really good taste. Their barbecue sauce is actually kind of different from... Like we said, guys, there's this entire theme of people going to far off places, learning how to do something and bringing it back to the 626 or the LA area. This is no different. The food fusion is a good sign. Phil, Phil do, do some, do some beat bite. Come on. Why am I always here when you guys are here? All right, guys, we're ending the video here. At oh Bobo my God. Mofo Cafe. I, you know. I swear I have like another life. <laughs> oh, Bobo Mofo's own little tape. Here we have the walnut shrimp burger. This shrimp burger is actually extremely underrated. Potato bun, very soft. I'm gonna go in, guys. Look at this. Just like some hap doha. Noodle fun. You know, straight from Taiwan. Shout out to Eric Wang. This is his family's recipe. How does it compare to the Luro Fan you had in Taiwan while you were playing basketball? Hey man, super authentic, just like it was made from Taiwan. You know, because a lot of Luro Fans, they have like hella sauces on the rice, but this one is like not too dry, not too wet. You know, just the right amount. All right, ending off the summer 2022 626 new Asian food crawl. You know, we got to end it off at Ball Paul Mofo. Shout out to Phil and Eric and the whole team here. And uh, you know what? As much as throughout this video, we saw a lot of great chains from Japan, from China, but it's very important to have your homegrown 626 Asian American brands. And this is one of them. Ball Paul is expanding, they got new locations. What you got? Here I got the blossom fruit tea, you know, got the tropical fruits in there. All right, here I got my matcha mint latte. I give it to Phil, he always talked about building culture and building a third place for people. And uh, you know, Bopo Mofo is just one of those strong brands. The brand is strong. To show you how like Asian American they are, they a lot of their drinks don't even have tea. This is a watermelon oat milk. It's literally watermelon juice with oat milk. Creamy. That's a creamy watermelon. <laughs> being in the OC, to being a dad, to wiping tables, to making boba, got it, got and then it. making films and commercials. Hey, do you, you need, need a, a villain? Do you need a TikTok guy with a broccoli cut and earrings? <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching that video from the 626. Uh, let us know in the comments down below where else we should check out. Every, even though I love New York City, every time I come back to the six, there's always something special about it. Feels here. Uh, I'm not there. Yo, yeah. he's Phil, Phil's here all the time. <laughs> we did not set this up. This is not planned.